Just when I figured out what it meant to be living in a state of red, I now find myself in a state of yellow, and I'm confused as to how to behave. What's in, what's not? What can I do, what shouldn't I do? Trump informs me that it's full steam ahead. Fauci says, be careful, the next wave is coming. It is obvious that shutting down businesses work to stem the spread of the disease, and yet the cost has been high on small businesses in particular, with bankruptcies, and in some cases, suicides. My religious friends mock me because of my caution. How is it that I don't trust God and do whatever I choose to do? My medical and scientific friends question that I'm not more cautious, that I should be following more stringent rules, and that this yellow stuff is really dangerous. The whole question of opening up the church again is a confusing piece. My bishop and many other church leaders urge caution, and yet parishioners are anxious to get back to normal, whatever normal may be. Yellow for me simply means confusion. In the last few days, there are two stories from the Bible that have seemed to pop up into my consciousness more than others. Both are set in times of crisis, one national, one personal. And together, they offer some sense of hope and direction in these confusing and chaotic times. The first is said just prior to the Babylonian exile. Anyone who is following the world stage realizes that crisis is on the horizon. Chaos is everywhere. Danger. Invasion. And King Ahaz of Israel is doing his best to take control. To make alliances to cut deals, to do almost anything possible to keep the nation afloat and his kingship intact. It is to him that the prophet Isaiah comes with a word from God. O King Ahaz, can't you just sit tight and let me deal with this? I've got this one covered. You don't need to be so political. It's in my hands. Just chill out. The king seems little impressed with Isaiah's word from God. And so Isaiah goes a step further and he says, Tell you what, king, let me offer you a sign that what I say is true. And Ahaz, in Mock piety says, oh, I could never demand a sign from God. The truth is, he doesn't want a sign from God. But Isaiah gives him one anyways. He says, king there, see that woman over there, the pregnant one. She is soon to give birth to a son, and she will call him Emmanuel. And before that kid is old enough to eat real food, this whole thing will blow over if you just get out of the way. Well, Ahaz couldn't do that. And we know the rest of the story. It wasn't long before the people of Israel were dangling their tootsies in the Tigris and Euphrates rivers as erstwhile prisoners of war of the Babylonian Empire. The second story is from the latter part of John's Gospel. Jesus has just received word that his good friend, Lazarus, is very ill. Jesus' response is to do nothing. 
And when he receives word that Lazarus is dead, many of those with him speculate as to what he was doing or not doing. Jesus' response is that his illness is not unto death, but that it is for the glory of God. Wait, and you will see. And they do, as Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Yellow seems to be a time of confusion. And perhaps, if we listen to these stories, it's not a time for bold action, but a time to watch, to wait, and to listen to what God is up to, to look for the signs that God is placing before us, that we may be guided in the days ahead, in preparation for that day when we shall get the all green. But for now, let us pay attention to where God is directing us. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life, say to my Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and I will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of God, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you, and famine will bring you no fear. Under God's wings, your refuge, with faithfulness, your shield. And I will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. For to the angels God's given a command, to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath on dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand, and hold you, hold you in the palm.
palm of his hand.